My friend, I want you to take a moment and ask yourself a question. A question that may seem simple yet profound in its implications. Can I truly be happy alone? This is not just a rhetorical question, but a journey into the depths of our own hearts and minds. The pursuit of happiness is often tangled with the presence of others, with external achievements and validations. But tonight, let's explore a different path. A path where happiness begins and ends within you. Imagine a life where your joy isn't dependent on others but radiates from within. This isn't just a fantasy, it's achievable with understanding and effort. You might wonder if this means isolating ourselves. It doesn't. It's about discovering happiness within, independent of the external world. This journey is about finding a balance where being alone doesn't mean being lonely. We often forget the importance of our relationship with ourselves amidst our various social roles. Let's learn to value our own thoughts, nurture our inner world, and appreciate the beauty of solitude. Being happy alone doesn't negate the joy of relationships, instead, it enhances them. When you are content with yourself, when you appreciate your own presence, you bring a stronger, more authentic self to your relationships. Your happiness becomes a gift you share, not a gift you seek from others. To embark on this journey of self-contentment, we must first peel away the layers of societal expectations and norms. We must unlearn the idea that solitude is something to be avoided, that being alone means being incomplete. We must embrace the concept that our happiness is our own responsibility, not someone else's. In the coming moments, let's explore together how we can cultivate this inner joy, this self-sufficiency and happiness. Let's learn to appreciate the silence, the peace, and the profound clarity that comes when we are alone with our thoughts. Let's discover how being happy alone is not just a skill but a profound strength. So, I invite you to open your minds and hearts to the possibility that the best company you can ever have might just be you. In our journey towards finding happiness and solitude, the first and perhaps most crucial step is self-reflection. Self-reflection is the mirror through which we see not just our face, but our soul. It's about asking ourselves those hard questions, confronting our true feelings, and understanding the depths of our desires. Why is self-reflection so vital? It's because within each of us lies a vast uncharted territory of potential and understanding. Many of us go through life without really getting to know who we are. We define ourselves by our jobs, our relationships, our roles in society. But strip away those titles, those external markers, and who are you? What are your passions, your fears, your dreams? What is that fire within you? These are not just questions. These are the keys to unlocking your true self. In the rush of everyday life, we often forget to spend time alone, listening to our hearts. We get so caught up in the busyness that we miss out on truly living. But remember, being busy doesn't mean being productive, and being alone doesn't mean being lonely. It's in those quiet moments of solitude that we hear our inner voice the loudest. That voice is our most honest guide, our best friend. It doesn't tell us what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. Self-reflection is not always a comfortable journey. It requires honesty, vulnerability, and courage. It requires us to face our insecurities, our fears, and sometimes our past mistakes. But, my friends, growth is not found in comfort. Just as a seed must break through its shell to grow, we too must break through our barriers to find our true selves. Now, how do we embark on this path of self-reflection? 
It starts with solitude. Solitude provides us the space and silence necessary for introspection. It's in this silence that we can disconnect from the noise of the world and connect with our inner world. Solitude is not about loneliness. It's about being in your own presence and enjoying it. Start by setting aside time for yourself each day, even if it's just a few minutes. Use this time to meditate, to journal, to contemplate. Ask yourself questions like, what makes me happy? What are my values? What do I want my life to stand for? These questions might seem daunting at first, but as you explore them, you'll begin to uncover the layers of your being. Remember, the journey of self-reflection is not a race. It's not about finding quick answers. It's about starting a lifelong conversation with yourself. It's about learning to understand and appreciate your complexities, your contradictions, and your uniqueness. As you grow more comfortable in your solitude, you'll find that your relationship with yourself begins to change. You'll start to appreciate your own company. You'll find joy in your own thoughts, your own dreams. This is the essence of being happy alone. It's finding that inner harmony, that peace that doesn't depend on external factors. And this journey of self-reflection not only leads to self-contentment, but also enriches every aspect of your life. When you know yourself, you make choices that are in alignment with your true self. Your relationships become more genuine because you bring the authentic you to them. Your work becomes more fulfilling because it resonates with your inner values. So, I encourage you, embrace the solitude, embrace the journey of self-discovery. For in knowing yourself, you open the door to true happiness. A happiness that is complete in itself. A happiness that doesn't need validation or company to exist. A happiness that is truly uniquely yours. Now, let's hear the stories of people who have found strength, peace, and happiness in being alone. These stories aren't just tales. They're proof of the power of embracing your own company in the journey of self-discovery. Take Jane, for example. She used to always be surrounded by others, thriving on social interactions and seeking approval from everyone. But when circumstances forced her to be alone, Jane faced a reality she'd never known. Initially scary, solitude became her opportunity. As time passed, she explored her interests, thoughts, and dreams. She took up painting, a passion she'd always wanted to pursue. In her own company, she found a talent waiting to be discovered. Jane's story shows us that in solitude, we can find hidden talents and passions. Then there's John, a successful businessman with a thriving career, a busy social life, and a loving family. Yet he felt a void he couldn't explain. It was only when he spent time alone, reflecting on his life, that he realized what was missing, a connection with himself. In his pursuit of success, John had lost touch with his own dreams. Through solitude, he rediscovered his love for writing, a dream he'd shown in his youth. Writing again brought him immense joy and fulfillment he hadn't felt in years. These stories, each unique in their own right, share a common thread. The discovery of self-worth and happiness in solitude. Jane, John, and many others like them have shown us that being alone does not mean being less. It means having the courage to face ourselves, to explore the depths of our being, and to find joy in our own company. Remember, the journey to being happy alone is not about shunning the world or discarding relationships. It's about building a relationship with yourself that is so strong. So fulfilling that you can enjoy your own company just as much as you enjoy the company of others.
It's about finding a balance where your happiness is not solely dependent on external factors, but is also rooted in your inner world. In our quest to learn to be happy alone, a vital component is personal development. Personal development is not just about acquiring skills or knowledge. It's about evolving into the best version of ourselves. It's a journey that is deeply personal, infinitely rewarding, and a cornerstone of finding joy in our own company. Why is personal development so crucial in this journey? Because the relationship you have with yourself is the foundation of all the relationships in your life. When you invest in yourself, you are not just improving skills or expanding knowledge. You are nurturing your soul, honoring your existence. Personal development is the soil in which the seeds of self-contentment and happiness grow. This journey of personal development starts with self-awareness. It's about understanding your strengths and weaknesses, your passions and fears. It's about looking within and asking yourself, what makes me tick? What do I need to grow? What do I want to learn? This level of introspection is the first step towards meaningful growth. Now, personal development is not always a smooth journey. There will be challenges, setbacks, and moments of doubt. But these are not signs of failure. They're opportunities for growth. Every challenge you overcome, Every obstacle you conquer makes you stronger, more resilient. It builds your character, enhances your self-esteem, and boosts your confidence. Remember, personal development is a continuous process, a lifelong journey. It doesn't have an end point. It's about constant growth, constant evolution. It's about becoming a little better each day, not just for yourself, but also for those around you. When you are the best version of yourself, you bring that best to everything you do and to everyone you interact with. So, embrace personal development as a key to unlocking your happiness and solitude. Invest time and effort in understanding and improving yourself. Explore new interests, learn new skills, take care of your body and mind. In doing so, you will find that being alone is not a state of emptiness, but a state of opportunity. An opportunity to grow, to learn, and to flourish. In confronting the fear of loneliness, it's crucial to cultivate a mindset that sees solitude not as a burden, but as an opportunity for introspection, for creativity, for personal growth. The mind is a powerful tool, and how we perceive our alone time can dramatically influence our experience of it. One transformative approach is to see solitude as a space for creativity and innovation. History is replete with examples of great thinkers, artists, and leaders who found their most profound ideas in moments of solitude. When we are alone, free from distractions and external influences, our minds can wander, explore, and create in ways that are not possible in the company of others. Embrace these moments as your personal workshops for creativity. Another aspect of overcoming loneliness is to practice self-compassion. Often, we are our own harshest critics. We berate ourselves for feeling lonely, for not being social enough, for not fitting into societal norms of constant connectivity. It's time to replace this self-criticism with self-compassion. Understand that it's okay to feel lonely at times. It's a natural human emotion. What's important is how you respond to these feelings. Be kind to yourself. Acknowledge your feelings and remind yourself that you are enough just as you are. Moreover, reframing our thoughts about loneliness can have a profound impact. Instead of viewing alone time as something to be avoided, view it as a rare commodity in today's busy world. In an age where constant activity and connectivity are the norms, 
Solitude becomes a luxury, a space where you can reconnect with your true self away from the noise and demands of the external world. It's also essential to understand the difference between temporary loneliness and chronic loneliness. While everyone feels lonely at times, chronic loneliness is a deeper, more persistent feeling that might require reaching out for support. Whether it's talking to friends, joining community groups, or seeking professional help. Remember, seeking help is a sign of strength, not weakness. Finally, envision your journey with solitude as a path to self-mastery. In learning to be comfortable with your own company, you develop resilience, independence, and a deeper understanding of who you are. This self-mastery is not just about being alone, it's about being whole. It's about building a life where your happiness is supplemented by others, not dependent on them. As we move forward from here, let's continue to embrace personal development, to explore the depths of our being, and to find joy and strength in our own company. Let's carry with us the understanding that overcoming the fear of loneliness is not an overnight task. It's a gradual process, a journey of self-discovery and acceptance. But every step taken on this path is a step towards a more fulfilled, more resilient, and more joyful self. As we journey through life, one of the most powerful tools at our disposal is our mindset. The way we perceive the world, the attitudes we hold, the thoughts we nurture. These shape our reality more than any external circumstance. In the context of learning to be happy alone, Building a strong, resilient mindset is not just beneficial, it's essential. A strong mindset starts with the understanding that happiness is a personal responsibility. It's not something that can be handed to you by someone else. It's something you cultivate within yourself. This realization is empowering. It means that your happiness is not at the mercy of external events or other people's actions. You are the architect of your joy. One key aspect of a strong mindset is positivity. Now, this doesn't mean ignoring life's challenges or pretending that everything is always fine. It means choosing to focus on solutions rather than problems, on opportunities rather than obstacles. A positive mindset sees the potential for growth in every challenge, the possibility of learning in every setback. Another cornerstone of a strong mindset is resilience, the ability to bounce back from setbacks, to adapt to change, to keep moving forward even when things get tough. It's about having an inner strength that doesn't waver in the face of adversity. Building resilience involves acknowledging your emotions, learning from experiences, and having the courage to step out of your comfort zone. Embracing solitude itself is a practice in building resilience. It involves stepping away from the constant need for external validation and finding validation within yourself. It's about being comfortable in your own skin, with your own thoughts. In doing so, you build a mental fortitude that is unshakable by loneliness or adversity. A strong mindset also involves practicing mindfulness and living in the present. Often, we are either dwelling on the past or worrying about the future, missing out on the beauty of the present moment. Mindfulness teaches us to live in the now, to fully experience and appreciate the present. In moments of solitude, mindfulness becomes a powerful tool, helping us savor the peace and tranquility of our own company. Lastly, cultivating a mindset of gratitude can significantly enhance our ability to be happy alone. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. It's about appreciating the small joys, the simple pleasures, and the blessings that we often take for granted. 
When we practice gratitude, we open our hearts to contentment, joy, and a profound sense of fulfillment. Remember, the quality of your relationships often reflects the quality of your relationship with yourself. When you are at peace with who you are, when you enjoy your own company, you bring a sense of self-assuredness and authenticity to your relationships. You become more present, more engaged, and more appreciative of the people in your life. So, as we continue to explore the art of being happy alone, let's not forget the beauty of togetherness. Let's cherish our relationships, contribute to our communities, and at the same time, savor the moments of solitude that give us space to reflect, grow, and recharge. As we draw near to the conclusion of our journey together, let's take a moment to reflect on the ground we have covered. Our exploration of being happy alone has taken us through the realms of self-reflection, personal triumphs, personal development, overcoming fears, building a strong mindset, and understanding the balance between solitude and community. Each of these elements plays a vital role in crafting a life where solitude is not just endured but cherished and enjoyed. Remember, learning to be happy alone is a journey, not a destination. It's a continuous process of self-discovery, growth, and acceptance. It's about finding joy in your own company, recognizing your worth, and embracing your individuality. This journey empowers you to bring your best self to your relationships and to the world. As we conclude, I want to leave you with a call to action, a challenge to embrace the lessons we've discussed. Start by dedicating time for self-reflection. Get to know yourself, your passions, your dreams. Embrace your solitude as a time for growth and creativity. Invest in your personal development. Pursue your interests and nurture your mind and body. Challenge the fear of loneliness by changing your perspective on solitude. Practice gratitude for the moments you have with yourself. Seek a balance in your life where you enjoy both the peace of solitude and the joy of companionship. Remember, the strength of your relationships often mirrors the strength of your relationship with yourself. But most importantly, cultivate a strong mindset. A mindset that is positive, resilient, and grounded in the present. A mindset that sees challenges as opportunities for growth and solitude as a space for self-discovery. As you move forward in your journey, Know that being happy alone doesn't mean you are isolated from the world. It means you are at peace with yourself, capable of enjoying both your own company and the company of others. It means you have a strong foundation of self-worth and self-love from which you can build meaningful connections and contribute positively to the world. So, take this message with you. Let it be a guiding light in your journey towards self-contentment. Remember that the best relationship you can have is the one with yourself. When you are content and happy in your solitude, you bring a sense of completeness to every aspect of your life. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me. Remember that the path to being happy alone is unique for each of us, but it's a path worth traveling. It's a journey that leads to self-empowerment, inner peace, and a deeper appreciation for life. You have the strength, the courage, and the resilience to walk this path. Embrace it, cherish it, and let it lead you to a life of fulfillment and joy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the journey of a lifetime, the pursuit of living your best life through the magnificent roadmap of self-improvement. I stand before you not merely as a speaker but as a fellow traveler on this incredible journey of personal growth and fulfillment. Let us embark together on this expedition that leads to the pinnacle of success, happiness, and excellence. Life is not merely about existing, it is about thriving, evolving, and becoming the best version of yourself. 
Each one of us possesses the boundless potential to shape our destiny and sculpt our reality. The power lies within us to create the life we desire. The roadmap to living your best life begins with a foundational principle, self-awareness. To embark on the path of self-improvement, you must understand yourself deeply, recognize your strengths, acknowledge your weaknesses, and embrace your uniqueness. Remember, self-awareness is the key that unlocks the door to transformation. Once you've gained clarity about yourself, set compelling goals. Goals are the guiding stars that navigate our journey. They provide direction, purpose, and a compelling reason to stretch beyond our comfort zones. Set goals that resonate with your heart and infuse them with passion, for passion is the fuel that ignites the fire within, propelling you forward even in the face of adversity. However, setting goals alone is not enough. Action is the bridge that connects your dreams to reality. Take consistent, deliberate action towards your aspirations. Every step, no matter how small, contributes to the monumental progress on this journey. Success is neither magical nor mysterious. It is the natural consequence of consistently applying basic fundamentals in the pursuit of self-improvement. Embrace the power of continual learning, investing yourself through books, seminars, mentors, and experiences. Learning is the catalyst for growth. It broadens your horizons, expands your perspectives, and empowers you to unleash your latent potential. Furthermore, surround yourself with individuals who uplift and inspire you. Your environment plays a pivotal role in shaping your mindset and attitude. Choose your associations wisely, for they have the power to influence your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Remember, challenges and setbacks are an inevitable part of this journey. However, it is not the challenges themselves but how we respond to them that defines our destiny. Embrace failures as stepping stones to success. Learn from them, adapt, and keep moving forward with unwavering determination. Self-discipline is the cornerstone of achieving greatness. Develop the habit of discipline in your daily routines. It is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Discipline allows you to stay focused, consistent, and committed to your journey, even when faced with distractions or temptations. Furthermore, cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is the catalyst for joy and contentment. Appreciate the blessings in your life, both big and small. A heart filled with gratitude attracts more reasons to be grateful and amplifies the abundance in your life. Living your best life is not merely about personal success. It's also about contributing to the world around you. Practice acts of kindness, empathy, and service. Your impact on others can create a ripple effect that transforms lives and fosters a better world for generations to come. In closing, my dear friends, the journey of self-improvement is an ongoing, lifelong expedition. It is not a destination but a continuous evolution, a commitment to becoming the best version of yourself. As you navigate this roadmap, remember these words. You are the architect of your destiny. Your thoughts, choices, and actions shape the life you lead. Embrace the journey wholeheartedly, for in the pursuit of self-improvement, you will discover the true essence of living your best life. May you awaken each day with renewed purpose, chase your dreams with unwavering determination, and savor the joy of becoming the magnificent masterpiece you were destined to be. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. I want to talk to you about something that affects every single one of us, something that plays a pivotal role in our lives, money. It's a subject that can evoke a wide range of emotions. Some view it as the root of all evil, while others see it as a ticket to freedom, joy, and fulfillment. But let me tell you something profound. Money itself is neither good nor evil. It's simply a tool, a means to an end. What matters most is how we perceive it and how we choose to use it. Now, I want to dive deep into the heart of the matter, the psychology of money. Because let me tell you, your mindset about money will ultimately determine your financial destiny. Yes, you heard that right. Your thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes toward money will shape your financial reality. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room. The limiting beliefs many of us have about money. How many times have you heard, or perhaps even said yourself, things like, money is hard to come by, I'll never be wealthy, or rich people are greedy. These statements, whether we realize it or not, create a barrier between us and financial abundance. 
We must recognize that our beliefs drive our actions. If we believe that money is scarce, that belief will manifest itself in our lives. We'll unconsciously repel opportunities, sabotage our efforts, and limit our potential to earn more. But what if we shift our perspective? What if we start believing that abundance is our birthright? What if we start seeing money as a tool to serve not only ourselves but others too? Imagine the possibilities if we believe in our capacity to create wealth and contribute positively to the world. Let me share a fundamental truth with you. Our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. If we want to change our financial situation, we must first transform our thoughts and beliefs about money. We need a money mindset makeover. So, how do we achieve this money mindset mastery? It starts with education and awareness. Educate yourself about finances, investments, and wealth building strategies. Read books, attend seminars, seek guidance from mentors. Knowledge is the key that unlocks the door to financial freedom. Next, practice gratitude. Gratitude for what you have right now, no matter how small. Gratitude opens the doors for more blessings to flow into your life. It shifts your focus from scarcity to abundance, from what's lacking to what's present. Furthermore, set clear financial goals. Without a destination, how can you navigate your way? Define what financial success means to you. Set specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Write them down and revisit them regularly to stay on track. Another crucial aspect of mastering the psychology of money is managing your finances wisely. Budget your expenses, lie below your means, and save and invest consistently. Understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets put money in your pocket, while liabilities take money out. Invest in assets that generate passive income and increase your net worth over time. Moreover, surround yourself with positive influences. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose to associate with individuals who have a healthy relationship with money, who inspire and uplift you toward financial growth. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Financial mastery is a journey, not a sprint. Be patient with yourself, stay persistent, and learn from your mistakes. Every setback is an opportunity to learn and grow stronger. Which leads me to my next point. Financial independence isn't just about accumulating wealth. It's about achieving a state of empowerment where you possess the autonomy to dictate your life's direction. It's about having the freedom to make choices not dictated by monetary constraints. And one of the most potent tools on this journey towards financial independence is the habit of reading books on personal growth. Why, you might ask. Because books are reservoirs of wisdom, condensed experiences, and the distilled knowledge of the greatest minds of our time and times past. They are the keys that unlock doors to your potential, providing insights that can profoundly impact the way you think, act, and perceive the world. Consider this. The richest individuals in the world, in both monetary wealth and personal fulfillment, are often voracious readers. Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, the list goes on. These visionaries attribute a significant part of their success not only to their actions but also to the knowledge they've acquired through reading. Personal growth books are like mentors available to us at any time. They guide us, challenge our perspectives, and encourage us to reach beyond our limitations. They provide strategies, frameworks, and invaluable advice on financial literacy, investment, entrepreneurship, mindset, and personal development, all pivotal aspects in the pursuit of financial independence. By reading extensively on personal growth, you gain access to diverse viewpoints and strategies that can propel you forward. You acquire the mindset necessary to navigate the complexities of the financial world. You learn about financial management, investment principles, and entrepreneurial insights that can catalyze your journey towards economic freedom. But it's not just about the practical knowledge gained from books. It's also about the transformation of your mindset. Reading books on personal growth expands your mental horizons instilling in you the confidence to take calculated risks, teaching resilience in the face of failure, and nurturing the patience required for long-term success. When you immerse yourself in books that discuss success principles, financial strategies, and personal development, you absorb the wisdom of those who have already walked the path. You learn from their triumphs and failures, 
enabling you to make informed decisions that propel you closer to financial independence. Moreover, reading is a form of ongoing education that doesn't require formal schooling or substantial financial investment. It is a democratic tool available to all who seek knowledge and growth. Regardless of your current circumstances, the library card in your hand and the determination in your heart can be the starting point of a journey towards financial liberation. But it's not just about reading, it's about implementation. The wisdom gained from books becomes powerful only when applied in your life. You must take action, apply the principles learned, and persistently strive for improvement. Financial independence is not a destination but a continuous journey, one where the habit of reading and implementing what you learn serves as your compass and fuel. In closing, my friends, understand this. Financial independence is not an exclusive club reserved for a fortunate few. It is a path open to all those who are willing to embark on the journey of personal growth. The habit of reading books on personal development, financial literacy, and success principles is the cornerstone of this expedition. So, I implore you, commit to the habit of reading. Let the wisdom within the pages of these books become the catalyst for your personal and financial evolution. As you devour the knowledge, remember, it's not just about what you read, it's about what you do with what you learn that shapes your destiny. Embrace the power of reading. Embrace personal growth. Embrace the pursuit of financial independence. The journey may be long, the challenge is many, but the rewards, oh, the rewards are immeasurable. Dare to start today, for the life you desire awaits within the pages of the books you choose to read and the actions you choose to take. Thank you.